All right, welcome back to Cross Defense. Thanks for joining me here. Pastor Brian Wolfmiller broadcasting from the Tower Studio, St. Paul Lutheran Church, Austin, Texas. Man, that is the coolest thing to say, the Tower Studio. I got a question here from Josh who asks, Can you, could you talk about confession and absolution and dealing with how we receive forgiveness? Maybe this might be a good topic for cross defense or Sunday drive home or Tuesday drive home or who knows. Uh, Sunday drive home, by the way, if you guys don't know if you're listening on the radio and you also have a thing called the computer every Sunday on YouTube, although normally it comes out on Monday, you kind of have a, a meandering, wandering drive home video where I sort of reflect on various different things. It's, it's basically like this. You know what makes a good YouTube video is a guy who's looking at the camera, who's paying attention, who's short. It's concise and to the point. Well, we do the exact opposite of that. I almost fall asleep while I'm driving home. And Anyway, if you're interested, that's uh, hanging around. Sunday Drive Home, you can search for that. Now, this is a great question from Josh. Where's Josh from? I don't know where Josh is from. Who asks about confession and absolution. And so there's a lot to talk about here. So we can do that. The number one, we want to remember that the when the Bible talks about confession, it talks about confession in two ways. It talks about confessing our faith, and it talks about confessing our sins. Now, the word confess is the word in Greek, homo logeo. We don't want to make too much out of it, but it's a nice, it's a nice compound word. Homo meaning same, and logeo meaning to speak or word or reason, things like that. Logos, that's the, that's the word there. And so to homo logeo, means to, it means to speak the same. It means to have the same voice. And when we confess, then, what we're doing is we're saying to God or about God, the, the things that he says about himself. So when we confess the faith, it's like this. God says, hey, I'm the creator. And we say, oh, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Or Jesus says, hey, I'm God and man. And we say, ah, I believe in Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, that he's my Lord. So that when we confess the faith, we're saying to God the same thing about him that he says about himself. Now, when we confess our sins, what we're doing is saying the same thing about ourselves that God says about us. So the Lord looks at us and he says, oof, you're a sinner. No one is good, no, not one. And we confess. We say the same thing. I'm not good. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I've sinned against the Lord in thought, word, and deed. By what I've done, by what I've left undone. I've deserved his temporal and eternal wrath and punishment. This is what it means to confess our sins. And and that confession comes in three forms. So that we confess our faith and we confess our sins. And when it comes to confessing our sins, there's three ways that we confess our sins. Now, now two of these are commanded and one of them is optional. The first is that we confess all of our sins to God all the time. Even we confess according to Psalm 19, forgive me my hidden faults. We confess even the sins that we don't even know about. We confess that we're sinners. When we, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses. It's not even just the things that we know we've done wrong. It's not even the sins we know we committed. We're just asking for, for all of them. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I know I've blown it. I've done wrong. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. I've broken God's commandments. I deserve his wrath. I just, please have mercy on me. That's the general confession that every Christian makes to God. And then there's the second kind of confession, which is when we specifically sin against someone and we go to them and confess our sins and beg for mercy. So that James says, confess your sins to one another. When I sin against you, I want to go to you. I'm commanded by the scriptures to go to you and to apologize, to confess my sins. So that we are confessing our sins to the person that we sinned against and we're asking for their forgiveness and, and hopefully they give it. And if not, we rejoice in the Lord's forgiveness and try to do what we can to, to make it up to people. Now, this is an interesting difference. We, we, cannot make up, we cannot make it up to God. We can't do anything to make ourselves right with God. We can't do anything to, 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 to correct or to pay back or to, or to fix the brokenness that exists between us and God because of our sin. For that, we need Jesus. But when we sin against each other, we, at least we can start to try to make it right, and that's part of repentance when it comes to repenting of our sin to each other. But then there's a third kind of sin, and that is when we confess our sins against God to one another. 
And when we hear the idea of confession and absolution, that's what we're talking about. Now, this is not commanded by the scriptures, but it's given to us in the scriptures as a gift that we can not only confess our sins, but we can also hear of the Lord's mercy and promises from each other. Now, I remember the first time I saw this in action. I think I've told you guys uh, the story. I was visiting a Lutheran church as a young adult and I hadn't been in the in the Lutheran church, at least not the liturgical Lutheran church, in a long time. And suddenly there was this guy in a dress standing up front saying these most audacious words, I forgive you your sins. And I, <laughs> and I thought to myself, who does this guy think he is? Only God can forgive sins. What's he doing up there forgiving sins? So I asked him after the service, I said, hey, what's this deal with this forgiveness business? And he did the very greatest thing in the world. He opened up Psalm, wait, wait, John 20. And he says, this is what this is about. So I'll pick it up in John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. Here we are at Christmas time looking at an Easter tag. That's okay. This is good. Peace be with you. That's what Jesus always says. Peace be with you. Like the angels, don't be afraid. Peace. Pox. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. That's where we find our peace, by the way, in the, in the pierced hands and side of Jesus. I mean, that's why he showed them the, his side, because that's what the soldiers had driven the spear through, and water and blood came forth. Disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, as if he hadn't said it already, because he can't say it enough, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Now, this is an inc absolutely incredible. I mean, it's almost, it's one of these things where, I mean, like all of the great truths of the Bible, you just wouldn't believe it unless you could see it written down. I mean, that's what the Bible is. You never could believe any of the truths of the scriptures unless the Lord had written them down for us to see with our own eyes and hear with our own ears so that we believe it. And this is one of them, that Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on his disciples and he says to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Now, I want to ask, just looking at the sentence, who is forgiving sins? Now, we will always want to say, well, it's God who forgives sins, but what does Jesus say? Who does Jesus say is forgiving sins? Jesus says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. So that Jesus, with these words, gives to his church this incredible authority, what we call the authority of the keys or the power of the keys. See also Matthew 18 and also Matthew 16, where that language of keys is used to open and close the, the doors of heaven, to forgive sins and to bind sins, or what it says here, to withhold forgiveness, to, to bind people in their sins. That authority Jesus gives to his church. Now, that is an incredible, incredible authority. And the way that it's most often exercised is through the practice of confession and absolution. Now, who can forgive sins? There's some controversy over this. I don't, I don't know why there shouldn't be, because the, the Lord has given to every Christian, every baptized Christian, this authority, but it's most often exercised by pastors who are put into the office to do so. But any Christian can say, in the name of Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. And here's the point. You're forgiving the sins not committed against you. You're forgiving the sins committed against God. You're forgiving those sins in the name of Jesus. That's what's being that's what's being sent away. So, 
So the practice of confession and absolution is going to a pastor or another trusted Christian, but a pastor has publicly sworn to give the absolution, and he's trained how to do it, and he's also made a public promise never to divulge the sins that are confessed to him. And you go to the pastor and you say, hey, hey, pastor, I know that Jesus died for me, and I know that all my sins are forgiven, but I got this sin, and it's stuck in my conscience. And I got this sin, and it's, it's like the dog that you give some peanut butter to and he just can't get the peanut butter off the roof of his mouth. You know, you've seen that? Sometimes we get sins stuck in the conscience like peanut butter on the roof of a dog's mouth and we gotta, we gotta pry that thing out of there and confession and absolution is the tool given to do that prying. So we go to the pastor and we say, hey, what are you gonna do with this sin? And the pastor does what Jesus does. He forgives it. That's incredible. Now, we have an order for that. I mean, one of the best things to do is to go to your pastor. If you're a Lutheran church or, you know, look, if you're, not a, if you're not a Lutheran, but you got a Lutheran church around you, which means you got a Lutheran pastor around you, which means you got a place where you can go and find a guy who knows how to forgive sins and say, hey, I got this sin that's bothering me. What does Jesus say about it? He might bring you into the church. He might not. He might put his hands on top of you. He might put his stole on and cover your head with his stole. He might, uh, he might ask you a couple of questions. He might, he might not. He might say to you something like, do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? If so, answer yes, and you'll say yes, and then he'll say, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. <laughs> and what do you do? What do you do when he says that? Josh asked a question. He says, how can we receive forgiveness? In other words, what do we do when that is spoken to us? And the answer is you just cry for joy. (laughs) You don't do anything but rejoice and delight in the Lord who has such mercy for sinners and such grace for us. Hmm. This is a big thing in the Reformation because most Protestant churches don't have confession and absolution. They said it was a Catholic relic and they threw it out. In fact, one of the big controversies during the Reformation was the indulgence controversy, right? Hey, can you buy and sell forgiveness of sins, et cetera, et cetera. But the, but the Lutherans come along. There's a guy, Philip Melanchthon, and he says, we retain confession and absolution for the sake of the absolution. In fact, I had a pastor who said, look, because of that, because of what Melanchthon said there, I don't need to hear someone's confession. Somebody just come up to me and say, I want the absolution, and you can give it to them. Blammo. You can go to the pastor and say, hey, can I hear that promise? Can I, can I hear those words? Can you turn that key for me? And, and crack open the door, throw, break down the door that leads to the grace of God. And that's what's going on with confession and absolution. Thank you, uh, Josh, for that question, and and I hope it helps. Hey, I know we got to throw in one more break here, and then we'll pr- press through the end. So let's have one quick break, and we'll be right back. Thanks for joining me here on Cross Defense. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with you. Yeah. 